Hey everyone, so I'm making a video today on how to install a, a different OS in dual boot using a Samsung Galaxy Note 4. I'm using a Verizon Galaxy Note 4 retail edition that's been converted to a developer edition thanks to some help over at XDA. And I thought this was cool. You can dual boot into a different OS, try it out before you flash it as your primary ROM. Uh, this is how I test a lot of the new CyanogenMod 13 builds. And we'll just go through how to do that. So first thing you want to do is install this dual boot patcher app. So I'll provide a link for this on the XDA page as well as on the YouTube page. I've got it in my external SD card. Just tap it, just install it. I've already got it installed so I'm not going to update it. And once you've got that installed, you'll tap on dual boot patcher. So I've got it set to go to the ROM screen, but this is the first screen that you'll see. If it doesn't come up, it should come up to say, would you like to set the kernel? If it does, say yes. If it doesn't, you'll go to this ROMs menu. On your primary, I've got a couple other ROMs here, but you should just have the primary. Tap on the three dots. You'll scroll down, it'll give you system information about your ROM, and click on set kernel. Currently running kernel will be saved as the kernel for primary. Continue. Great, you set the kernel. If you, um, if you have some other problems, you can also update the RAM disk on the primary to try to resolve those. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to patch some zip files. Before we do that, uh, there's a couple different ways to install things on here. One is through the secondary slot. You also have multi-boot slots. And then you've got data slot. And then you've got external SD slot. So if you go to the free space tool, it'll tell you all about these. So secondary and multi-boot slots are all going to save in system. So you can look here, see how much space you have left. If you're running a bunch of different Cyanogen Mod 13s, then those are pretty light. They'll be 400 megabytes plus whatever Google Apps you put on there. And you might be able to get away with a secondary and a multi-boot and a multi-slot. But if uh, you're running something that's got TouchWiz, those can run up to one and a half to two gigabytes and you might not be able to flash that into the secondary slot. If that happens, you can go over into the data slot. So they don't have a limited number of slots for data, so you can just put it into the data slot and see I've got nine gigabytes free there, external SD slot. Uh, you can put as many as you want there as well. And then they won't affect uh, your system partition. So to get a custom ROM, go to patch zip file. So this is where we're gonna patch all of the individual zip files that we want to uh, flash onto our custom OS. So I'm going to click on my external SD card. I've got all these in ROMs. I'm going to start, I'm going to flash CyanogenMod 13. CyanogenMod 13 is a good one to flash because it's got a bunch of different things, a bunch of different zip files, and I'll show you how to do all of these. So uh, it doesn't matter what order you pick to do them when you're patching them, it will make a difference later. So when I'm patching, I'll just say, okay, got my open. G apps micro. So partition configuration for this one we'll select secondary. Um, <clears throat> when you select secondary it tells you down here where you need to install this ROM. So where you should put those patched files. The device TRLTE, I know that's not my uh, particular Samsung Galaxy Note 4's name but it's running the Snapdragon so it's good. Uh, if you want to put it in a data slot, you'll just have the option data slot. You'll need to pick, enter an ID for the data slot, so I'll just say three. And then you'll need to put these uh, patched zip files to this particular folder right here. Data, multi-boot, data slot three. You can do the same thing with external SD slot. And you go to external SD card, make a multi-boot file, external SD slot three should be noted that it's not going to make these folders for you by itself. So we'll go over that. Um, so I'm going to put this to the secondary just to show you. So now I'm going to have to go internal storage, go down to multi-boot. Now there's no dual here, so I'm going to have to add a folder and I want it 
all lowercase because that's the casing that it had when it instructed me to do that. Push OK. So now I'm going to save it there. All right. So next one, I'm going to have to go all the way back to my external SD card and find the next file for the ROM. So Sanogen Mod 13 again. So I'll just do the exposed one now. Say I'm going to do it in secondary. Continue. Got to navigate back to my dual folder. Save it there. You'll notice that it's going to save these with the file name underscore dual dot zip. That's how you know it's patched. And then I'll just go back and find the other two. So I've got Cyanogen Mod 13. You want to make sure it's not the primary ROM upgrade because that'll flash it straight to the ROM that you're running currently. And that could cause problems. Continue. That in the folder. So all I need now is Super Sue. So flash that as well. Secondary. Navigate back. Alright, and save it. So once you've got all of these queued to be patched, push the check mark. It'll work on all of them simultaneously alright so it's all done so now that it's all done if you want to clear them away or if you put one in here and you don't want it there you can just swipe it away um, I don't really care right now so I'm gonna go over to ROMs so to add a new ROM you're gonna click this button down here uh, you can read through this so I'm going to add all of these flashed files. So I need to add them in the order that I want them flashed. So I'll put Sanjimon 13. Zip was originally patched for installation to dual. Would you like to change the installation location? We want to keep the location because we put it in the proper folder. All right, and then I'll add. So I'll just do open gapps first, and then I'll do super sue. And then I'll do exposed. But if I did this in the wrong order, I could just swipe it away and then add the right one. And that's how I would change the folder. So great. So I've got all these done. You'll notice they're all underscore dual, underscore dual, underscore dual. That's how we know they're all going to the right place. Location dual, 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 dual. Great. And then I've got the ROM, I've got open G apps, I've got super sue, I've got exposed. Click good. Alright, so now we've opened an in-app console essentially and it's going to flash this like it would with the custom recovery. So it's going to flash it like it would in twerp. What we're looking for here is it will have a bunch of multi-boot code but once it will start flashing the actual ROM so in this case Cyanogen Mod 13 it'll flash Cyanogen Mod 13 and then we'll see a green uh, command return 0 which means that it has flashed that correctly if it turns red uh, then we know that something went wrong I guess while it's loading here I'll throw in that I've tested this see command return 0 green that's good I'll throw in here that I've tested this with Cyanogen Mod 13 as a primary and put uh, the Paul Piz ROM or Jasmine ROM as secondary along with Kyubi ROM. And if you have a non TouchWiz ROM as the primary ROM, it will have issues trying to dual boot to a TouchWiz ROM. So I would not recommend that. However, I've had Paul Piz ROM on here as the primary, and so far I haven't had any issues dual booting to anything else. So Kyubi ROM's fine, Jasmine ROM's fine. As long as I have a TouchWiz based ROM as my primary, I think that solves the problem. And then I can dual boot into Cyanogen Mod 13 if I want, which works flawlessly. The only downside is that any of these apps that you dual boot into, uh, as of yet, there's no way to back up that ROM. So if you go into twerp and try to back up the ROM, what you'll actually be doing is backing up your primary ROM with all of the 
data from all these other uh, ROMs. So command return zero, that's good. It starts the next flash. So, so far we got set engine mod 13, we've got OpenG apps, we're doing SuperSU right now. Great, command return zero on that one as well. Now we're flashing exposed. Command return zero. So successfully completed four out of four actions in Cyan. That's exactly what we want to see. So once you receive this notification, you just click the back arrow. It'll list your new ROM with a check mark. The check mark means that it's going to boot to that ROM. So uh, because it it'll go through essentially when you click on that and you'll need to reboot the phone and it will boot to that new ROM. So I'll show you how to do that with one I've already set up because I don't want to take the time to go through the whole setup. So I'll just uh, reboot to CyanogenMod13. So sometimes, the first time you boot up to the ROM, it will be a little slow, and then every subsequent uh, boot to that ROM will be faster. All right, so boot it up, CyanogenMod13. <clears throat> so this one's pretty much set up already. Uh, you would go through the setup process if you were booting to the fir for the first time. So first thing that you want to do is you want to go back to your file explorer and install that dual boot patcher app. That's going to be uh, really important because that's going to be how you get uh, back to your primary ROM. So I've already got it installed, so cancel back. And I'm just going to launch that app. So now you'll see this menu. Um, you can look at all your ROMs, you can look at, again, the free space, kind of see what's going on there. Uh, I'm going to go, so you'll notice that with the free space, I've got a lot less free space now because I've installed this ROM into the secondary partition. If I installed it anywhere else, so my data partition is taken up by the two ROMs I've got there right now. Um, so if I were to reboot this now, it would reboot back into CyanogenMod13. So it, it would boot back into whatever thing I have selected. So currently it's the data slot one, and if I kept this check marked, then it would continue to boot back into this even when I reboot it. That can be a problem if uh, you get into a boot loop, which I've done a couple times just when I've had CyanogenMod13 as the primary and I've tried to boot to a TouchWiz ROM as the secondary. 
So in that event, uh, the way I, I will show you now, how, so normally you would just click on primary, if you want to get back to your primary ROM, reboot, and would go back to primary. So I'm going to keep it here, and if I were to reboot right now, um, then it would come back to CyanogenMod 13. So I'm going to power off, and I'm going to show you how to recover if you get into a boot loop with this tool. So I gotta wait for it to shut down. All right, so boot to recovery. So what I'm gonna do, install. So select storage, I'm gonna go to internal storage. Uh, so to show you, so if I'm Internal storage, I'm going to scroll down to multi-boot because that's where my ROMs are. Now I, you can see I can select any one of these. So I've got my data slot one, two, dual, primary. I'm going to select primary, that's where my primary ROM is. Install image, and I'm going to install the boot image to the boot partition. And swipe to confirm flash. All right, everything's good. Reboot the system. And like I said, if, if this had... Um, so if I was, if I had not done that, it would keep booting into Site Antigen Mod 13. But I have done that, so now it's going to reboot into my Paul Pizrom, which I've uh, customized with this boot animation. And there you have it. So now it's boot back to the original image that I had on here before. So everything's great. And if I wanted to dual boot into any one of the other images I had created, I can do that now. Uh, one more thing to note is that if you're dual booting with this, I recommend not using a fingerprint and because sometimes those don't carry over well between the different OS's. So I've had some instances where it works and some instances where it doesn't work. So to be on the safe side until I test it more, I'm not going to use a uh, fingerprint without backing up first to make sure I don't get locked out. All right, well, that's it. That should give you enough information. If you have any questions, uh, just post them to the XDA form that's linked below and I'll try to answer the questions.